system and you're gonna have problems. It slows everything down. You feel sluggish, you feel tired, you wanna sleep. And so we need to be careful. When we draw, when I used to draw blood, I was a phlebotomist in uh, Berkeley University for the students. And we just say, did you um, just eat a, at one of the fast food restaurants? Can we draw your blood right away? And we draw their blood after a burger, fries, and a shake. And the fat, the, and the, the blood would separate. The fat was like this much, and the red was like this much, yellow fat. Then we'd go find these plant-based kids on, on the campus. We knew there were some Adventist kids on there, but they were hiding from us. So we go find them, draw their blood. They just had a nice plant-based meal. The blood was like this, this much, and the fat was like this much. Friends, we are asking for heart attacks, diabetes, all those diseases are caused so much by our high fat diet and we're talking plant fat, vegan, fat, fat. We, many vegans have the worst diets in the world. They say sugar is vegan. They say chips are vegan, corn chips. I mean, all these foods that are full of salt and fat are not the answer. Look in, the, like I said, in the produce section. I wanna share with you one of the most powerful foods on the planet right now. How many people are eating wild blueberries? Not cultivated, wild ones. There we go, my buddy's over here. Wild blueberries, I call them the resurrection food, okay? Where do we find wild blueberries? Anybody from Canada or Maine here? Okay, oh, okay. Well, guess where they grow? They go, grow in Canada and Maine in the worst conditions possible. It's freezing cold or it's smoking hot, okay? And these little wild blueberries have been grown by the American Indians for years and years and years. And these wild blueberries, I call them resurrection food. They're the world's most powerful food and they're hiding under scrubby bushes in plain sight. These wild blueberries is, one doctor said that he doesn't believe there's a cancer that cannot improve by using wild blueberries, okay? He does said there's not a disease known to humankind that wild blueberries cannot improve you with. Wild blueberries are frozen, they're in the freezer section, they're at Walmart called Wyman's Wild Blueberries. I, uh, I have a wild blueberry powder that I carry with me. You can get wild blueberry powder, throw it in a, some water or a smoothie. You can get wild blueberries at Trader Joe's, Sprouts, Whole Foods, grocery stores, freezer. Tiny little wild blueberries. Put them in your smoothies, put them on a salad, put them in your oatmeal, put them in your mouth. That's the best place to start. Just get them in there, okay? Wild blueberries, powerful food. Bring cultivated blueberries into your life. It's like drinking, regular blueberries is like drinking from a paper cup. But when you drink wild blueberries and eat them, it's like drinking from the Holy Grail, okay? Wild blueberries, if you do nothing else to improve your immune system, wild blueberries are the most powerful antioxidant. Now, why do we need antioxidants? What does oxidation do? Anybody take care of automobile engines or... Uh, oxidation is where you are rusting, okay? Oxidation causes rust. So antioxidants in our body are keeping us from rusting out. How great is that? How many, I need that, okay? Anybody feel like their joints are like the Tin Man and the Wizard of Oz, <laughs> okay? So we need to get those wild blueberries. The thing I love about it, they're the highest proportion of antioxidants of any food on the planet. You can't waste any time. You start eating wild blueberries. If you get anything from our talk today, they thrive with more than 100 variable strains. They look similar, but they have different genetic makeups. These wild blueberries, friends, are the only plant food. You can burn them to the ground. The American Indians burn them to the ground every season so there's nothing left of them. And guess what? They come right back up. Without replanting them, without planting seeds. Do you know a food that does that? It doesn't happen. You have to replant other, other types of uh, food. The wild blueberries come right back up no matter how harsh the conditions. And I, I equate that to our relationship with Christ. All of us have had hard, rough 
terrible conditions. You didn't get in this world easily. Just coming through the birth canal, think of that. That was not easy, okay? But every person has gone through tremendous emotional, mental, physical challenges. But in Christ, he says, you may look like nothing to the world, but you're very special. And even if they burn us to the ground, Jesus says, in Christ, you just get back up again. And so we have that, I call it the resurrection food. When you have Christ in you, you can get back up again. We don't have to stay down. Yes, we're going to fall. Proverbs 24, 16 says, a righteous man falls seven times. But what's the rest of the verse say? He gets back up again. You get back up again. You start putting these beautiful wild blueberries in your foods, okay? The next superfood I want to share with you is <clears throat> coming. And that's the benefits of celery. How many people here are using celery juice, okay? We make celery juice every morning. We drink about 16 to 32 ounces a day. We're on the road every week. So when we're home, it's celery time. Ask Michael. He just knows he's going to get hit with celery, okay? Celery has so many benefits. Celery can reestablish the digestive system. If you're having digestive problems, taking Tums, uh, re reflux uh, medications, speak to your doctor, but you can get, celery juice can clean that up, okay? And it has, it fights autoimmune diseases. It helps restore our adrenal glands that we're knocking down with caffeine, uh, energy drinks, um, apple cider vinegar, bad stuff. Doing that destroys the, the intestinal tract, destroys the adrenal glands. Celery juice can start healing those situations. Many of us all have strep resistant, antibiotic resistant strep bacteria in our bodies from taking antibiotics. And the celery juice can re get rid of those bacteria. So it's powerful medicine. Tonight before you leave, I have about six handouts over there on the right. One of them is 21 questions about celery juice that most people ask me. So I've written them up so you can just read that and it'll tell you how to do the celery juice. But it has a whole bunch of information on boosting your immune system and other resources over there. So feel free to take that and take some to your friends if you'd like to. So I won't go on further. Celery juice is an herb. It's not a vegetable. It likes to be by itself. It doesn't need lemon. It doesn't need your ginger. It doesn't need your kale. It just needs to be put through a juicer and put in your mouth, okay? Empty stomach, wait about 20, 30 minutes after you drink the celery juice, and then have your breakfast, oatmeal, whatever you do. Just ha wait 30 minutes for the celery to start working. In the beginning, wait close to restrooms also because it will move things that have been needed to be moved probably for years. So do start slowly. You could start with eight ounces. You can start with four ounces and see how you do. But it will start cleaning out dead junk that's in the intestines that needs to move, okay? So the other thing too, greens are very important. As you know, they are full of minerals. Think of the root the root foods, the potatoes, the beets, all those roots that grow under the ground, those roots are bringing up the minerals more than any other food, okay? Everything above ground, they lose some of the minerals. So these foods like the potatoes, the beets, the carrots, all these foods that grow underground that get all those minerals that we need so much, they are powerful foods to eat. And these minerals such as calcium, iron, iodine, zinc, are all found in these green leafy foods, okay? I'm not gonna go into what the benefits of all those things like the iron, but I do wanna talk about zinc. Zinc is very important. How many people are taking zinc? Okay, zinc is found in foods. It's found in uh, spinach, nuts, seeds, mushrooms, grains, and legumes, okay? The only food that has vitamin D is mushrooms. All other vitamin D is added to food, but you can get it from the sun, right? Vitamin D, it, we can convert it into vitamin, vitamin D from sunlight. But back to zinc. Zinc is found in some foods, but it is one of the most powerful anti-infective, powerful antibacterial. Uh, in any, anything in our body where infection can start, all of us have been exposed to so many viruses, shingles, 
Epstein-Barr, herpes viruses, you name it. There's so many, hepatitis viruses, there's so many viruses, but that's okay because foods taken properly, trusting in God, we can remove those viruses slowly but surely, okay? And it takes letting the liver rest from the high-fat diets and letting these foods, natural live foods, get into our body. Eliminate the foods that are harmful. So zinc is very important. Many people, it says 15 milligrams a day up to 30. Some say 50 milligrams a day because of COVID. But again, everyone should be taking zinc. Talk to your own doctor. I do have, afterwards I can show you, I have a zinc um, preparation I take from Vimergy.com. I don't work for them. It's a wonderful supplement company, Vimergy, V-I-M-E-R-G-Y.com. Their zinc is very nice. There's no additives, no alcohol. Any tinctures you take should never have an alcohol base. It'll destroy it. So we take the zinc, and the, um, this is very good for keeping infections from ever starting. I have in here on the handout, I have a zinc shock therapy. On the airplane, I put about two dropperfuls of zinc in my throat, pray a lot, <laughs> get on the plane for eight hours with a mask on, and, and just hope that I don't ex get exposed to anything while I'm flying around. So I do, I do zinc extra sometimes as I fly, okay? But green leafy vegetables, very important, friends, because this is what's going to change the outlook. The second thing is very important is fruit. Please do not be afraid of fruit. How many people have a fruit fear? Because someone said it has sugar in it. There's no sugar in fruit. It is a juice from heaven that God has put together that can heal so many things. If there's anything you're really sick from and you really can't eat, take fruit, okay? Fruit will cleanse and heal the body so fast. And But be sure you're getting enough and be sure you speak to your doctor if you're on medications or anything that could affect that. But fruit is very important. It is the antioxidants of the earth are in fruit. Friends, anybody ever eat brain? I don't know if any of you have been eating brain lately, but there are places that still do. <clears throat> in Papua New Guinea, when we've traveled, we've asked those who've eaten brain before, what does it taste like? Has anyone ever heard what it, the brain tastes like? It's very sweet. It's not fat like keto diets that say they help your brain. It'll destroy your brain, okay? Your brain is sweet. What is the fruit? It has the juices that the brain needs. The brain is fatigued, exhausted from stress, distractions, noise, pollution, and so on. The brain is exhausted. And when you pick fruit, it is healing the brain. People think they need to go to Starbucks. What they're at Starbucks for is the sugar and the cream giving them sweet calories for their brain has nothing to do with the caffeine also is addiction, it's a drug. But what they need is sugar at that time. They need the sugar fix. And so guess what? Fruit is God's natural sugar fix. And I tell people who are going through really chronic autoimmune diseases and they feel at three o'clock they're just gonna fall over asleep, they just can't even function. And I tell them, carry some dates around, carry some celery sticks, some carrot, some cucumbers, some dates, some dried fruit, so you can get the fruit power from the date, the natural sugar, and you can get the mineral salts from the vegetables. And those two combine are electric current that will recharge the brain. God's got such powerful remedies. And we're so easy to just pick up some junky, Red Bull or energy drinks, and, and we're destroying our brains and our adrenal glands and our kidneys. Okay, here's where people start to throw eggs, so luckily you look pretty calm out there. But when I start telling people what not to eat, um, they don't usually invite me back. So which feeds, which foods can feed viruses, bacteria, and so on? Eliminate these foods to help protect yourself and uh, don't feed the flu. Now, the flu, they call it the flu season, right? When did that start? They tell you to take a flu shot in uh, September, October. What happens in October 
to make people think it's the flu season. Well, we have this thing last weekend or two weeks ago, and it's called trick or treat, okay? And what do we do? All year, we never buy these bags of candy this size. We've never done that all year until that month. We go in a store and buy this garbage candy that's so toxic for so cheap, and we just give it to our children. Can you imagine? I mean, if we don't have enough problems with their energy, why would we do that? And so then October, we start this passing out the candy, and then two weeks or three weeks later, we have this Thanksgiving meal, and we have to eat all these foods that our mother made and grandfathers made and whoever made, we have to eat those foods, and then we have to go to Christmas parties or Hanukkah parties or whatever kind of events, work parties, and we got to have all those foods, and then it's New Year's, and then it's uh, Super Bowl, and then it's Valentine's Day, and then it's Easter, and guess what? October, they said the flu season started, and as soon as Easter's over, the flu season stopped. I call it the food season, my friends. It's a food extravaganza going on. <laughs> And those foods are killing your immune system. Every teaspoon of sugar, sugar, one teaspoon, kills about 14,000 white blood cells that fight infections, viruses, bacteria. And one soda has 12 teaspoons. Do the math. 12 times 14,000. You've wiped out your immune system for a good five to eight hours until it can rebuild those white blood cells. But then we start the next day. Get the coffee going. Get the sugar going get the cream going, and we kill more white blood cells, more white blood cells, okay? So what foods can we do to eliminate being sick? And I know you were not going to hear this, but MSG. How many people say, I don't use MSG? Do you know something happened back in about 1997? MSG was known to cause severe migraines, severe headaches, severe neurological problems. There was, I grew up in Hawaii. Every single food had ajinomoto, monosodium glutamate in it. It was in everything because it made it taste so good. Those ramen noodles and all that stuff. The inmates would just go, they'd have the ramen at night and they had wild, crazy dreams and everything because it was full of MSG. So in about 1997, they said, you know, this MSG, we're not selling our food too well. So what we're going to do is make something called natural flavor. We'll call it natural flavor, and all you MSG foods get to go under, and now you can call it natural flavoring. If there's anything you're eating that says natural flavor, it's MSG. Nutritional yeast, to all of you Saturday night popcorn eaters, nutritional yeast is MSG. I'm sorry, like I said, hate to bear the bad news, Nutritional yeast is full of MSG. All those things on the back of many of these fake meats say natural flavor because they don't have to say monosodium glutamate anymore. So please be very careful. If you have neurological problems, tremors, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, all kinds of neurological things going on, look at the labels and get those things with natural flavor out of your diet. Canola oil is very damaging. All dairy products, when I did microbiology, we didn't grow viruses and bacteria on fruits and vegetables. They wouldn't grow. They would not grow on a fruit or vegetable. Guess what we grow, grew them on? Eggs, milk, cheese, and dairy products, and some animal protein. It worked very well. We could grow them. Do you want to be a walking Petri dish for all the viruses, bacteria, and uh, deadly viruses that are out there? I don't want to be. <clears throat> I, don't, I need all the help I can get. <laughs> I already messed up my immune system as a kid. If it didn't run fast enough in Hawaii, we ate it. We chased the pigs in the mountains, and we got pulled the squid right out of the ocean, ate it raw, okay? If that doesn't mess up your liver, <laughs> I don't know what would. But please be very careful with dairy, okay? Um, <clears throat> there was a uh, writing about 1865 
a little lady called Ellen White. She wrote something in about 1865. 1865, there were people trying to grow viruses and then put them out into the food chain about that time, late 1800s, early 1900s, it was, which is evil. And they had to grow them on eggs. They wouldn't last unless they were on eggs. And those eggs foods got put into the public food chain. And to this day, they cannot breed out chicken leukemia virus out of eggs. But when I go to these farms that say they're vegan and so on and blah, 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 and I say, you know that they have chicken leukemia virus in the eggs. Why are you selling them? And they said, because if you just cook it long enough, it should kill the virus. And I didn't seem satisfied with that, you know, because like I said, I grew up totally heathen, didn't know the Bible, didn't know about God or God's natural remedies. But when I found this little book that said, do not eat eggs, milk, or cheese, sugar should not enter the mouth, I decided, what does she know that we don't know? Well, she didn't know either. She didn't know that what she said was, eggs will soon be unfit to eat. She said, there'll come a time when we should not have these foods. She didn't realize that at that time, people were growing these foods and putting viruses into them to put into the, the food chain. And so my friends, it's sometimes even if we don't understand the wisdom that we've been given by God, it's best to trust him and we will understand it better by and by. So what else is on there that we love? Gluten, we love gluten steaks. The New Start program where I worked, you don't get any gluten. It's super high protein. They add a lot of oil to it and fat and the high protein is very destructive to kidneys, very destructive to uh, healing. So there's no gluten. Pork, the Bible tells us about pork. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever read that, but it says there's an abomination. The other reason about pork that God didn't put in the Bible is that it's the highest fat food you can have on the planet. If there's any animal food, it has the highest amount of fat. And God was trying to protect us like a public health protection by telling us, put the fat on the altar with the blood. Leviticus 3.17 says, cut out the fat, cut out the blood. You guys need to eat animals? I understand. There was a flood. There's no, there's no fruit. There's no vegetables. Eat the animals. No problem. But what he said was, cut, drain all the blood and cut the fat. We don't do that. It doesn't taste good. I've tried it. It tastes like cardboard. I worked in a Jewish delicatessen owned by Chinese. I was the only one who looked Jewish in there. And so everyone came to me and told me what they thought about the Jewish salami, the Jewish hot dogs, okay, the kosher, because it tastes terrible unless you spice it with so many spices to make it taste good when you cut the fat and drain the blood. So, friends, God's been trying to protect us. Artificial sweeteners, Farm fish are fed worse stuff than animals in a, in a regular farm. Farm fish are fed toxic things. Artificial sweeteners, even corn. Growers of organic corn who do say they do not use pesticides have tested their own corn and they say it's GMO because all the pesticides from other farms have attacked the corn and it becomes hybridized. So these are the foods, if you're sick, if you're having neurological problems, autoimmune diseases, pains, aches, twitching, things that you don't understand what's going on with your body, if you have none of those problems, you have no problem in your life with health, you could eat pretty much anything you wanna eat. But those of us who've been exposed to viruses, bacteria, toxic heavy metals, pesticides, uh, radiation poisoning, uh, what else have we been exposed to? so on. We've had all that exposure. The thing about those exposures, radiation needs to eat. In order for the radiation to keep making you sick, it needs food. In order for the mercury and the heavy metals to make you sick, it needs food. In order for the pesticides to keep making you sick in your liver, it needs food. 
and these are the foods that feed those pathogens. When you understand that we're feeding the pathogens we're exposed to with food, and then you see God's plan, you say, praise God that he gave me simple food, simply prepared, so I can get well. And then you're really living, my friends. That's really living. So the do not eat list, as I said, <clears throat> the quote that she wrote here, she said, as disease in animals increases, the use of milk and eggs will become more and more unsafe. 1800s, 18, late 1800s. An effort should be made to supply their place with other things that are healthful and inexpensive. Three testimonies say, you must not eat eggs or milk or cream. You must not use butter in the preparation of food. She loved all those foods. She ate all those foods. She had no desire to make your life miserable. She just was trying to let God speak through her a health message for today. This is so important today. If you get anything from this, bring down the animal fats, bring down the plant fats, increase all these other fruits, roots, vegetables, minimal seeds also, and all these other beautiful antioxidants. Get excited about these beautiful colored foods and you're gonna see your health uh, change drastically. Apple cider vinegar, vinegar should never enter the body. Vinegar is fantastic for outside the body. You can heal wounds with vinegar in water in a foot bath. You can clean your glass. You can clean every counter in your kitchen with apple cider vinegar. I don't care if people say, but it has the mother in it, apple cider. I don't care if it has a mother, a father, a baby in that stuff. Don't put it in the mouth, okay? It will destroy the adrenal glands. It can cause hair loss. You do that long enough, women wonder why their hair, usually when women lose their hair, it's because they had so much caffeine before days, probably when they were raising their kids and trying to keep up with them. Caffeine, after many years, sitting, the drug is a drug in the liver, it can cause hair loss. So apple cider vinegar is a no-no. Citric acid is on most all these cans of beautiful artichokes, you know, a can of beautiful artichoke hearts, delicious. Look on the side, citric acid. It comes from the uh, corn that's been hydrolyzed, high fructose corn syrup, citric acid is taken from that and it's a preservative. Just put it under hot water. If it's on the mushrooms or something too, just rinse it really good in hot water and then drain it and have it, but not all the time. So citric acid can be very damaging. Alcohol, I won't go into a whole, it's a whole nother visit to your church, but uh, we'll leave that for another time. Um, wine in the body is unfermented, okay. So we wanna build a robust immune system. Like I said, um, there's beautiful information on those handouts about building your immune system, natural remedies, vitamin C shock therapy, zinc shock therapy. Please get the handouts. I'm going to move along to a couple other things that uh, I want to talk about. I talked about sugar. It's just a no-no, okay? We don't need it. There's natural sugars you can use. You can use stevia. Stevia does not raise your blood sugar. It does not cause cavities. You use just a few little drops of stevia. It's from a plant. You can use xylitol. Anyone ever heard of xylitol? Xylitol is from a plant. It's like a white powder. And it's exactly, if you're cooking, if you're a great cook, then you use the exact amount of xylitol to the exact amount of sugar. So if it said one cup of sugar, you could use one cup of xylitol. Will not cause cavities, will not raise blood sugar, okay? But speak to your doctor if you need to. The one I wanted to talk about was the zinc shock therapy. As I told you, zinc's very important. It's in the handout on the back there, so you can have the recipe to do that. <clears throat> and um, it's clicker business. The other one I really want you to know about is cat's claw. Cat's claw is a natural antibiotic that will not become resistant. You can take it every day. You can take it, speak to your doctor. You can take it regularly. It's uh, antiviral, it's immune boosting. And you can take two or three dropperfuls a day in some water or uh, in your juices, and it will really help protect you from having infections. So I'd want to make sure you know about 
the cat's claw. The cat's claw I take is just like the zinc. It's in a dropper here, right there. And it's by Vimergy. And I just put about two or three dropper fulls in our water and get our cat's claw every day, okay? Another one to help boost nerve damage is B12. <clears throat> Sorry about that, just clicking away. All right, okay. Vitamin C shock therapy is also in your handout. The B12 is very important. Animal eaters, vegetable eaters, everybody is B12 deficient, okay? B12 shots are not the way to go, okay? Research has shown you're not improving your B12 um, <clears throat> absorption through a shot through the muscle. B12 under the tongue sublingually, or if it was in the IV with an IV vitamin C drip or something, will be absorbed better. But the B12 you need is in the handout as well. It's adenocosobalamin uh, and methylcobalamin. Those two together are the best B12, and you can get that from Vimergy, but we all need B12. You just put a two dropper fulls, hold it under your tongue about 30 seconds, and it will help nerve problems, nerve damage, neurological damage. And B12 has so many benefits, but everyone has been low in B12, and just because your blood test says it's high is not truly accurate, okay? B12 used to be found by going in your garden. Anybody have a garden? One of you guys out there? A garden, and you take your tomatoes right from the dirt, and you eat them. You go out with grandpa and get some carrots and tomatoes, and that on that dirt was full of microorganisms, and that's how your body made the B12 and the ileum, okay? So B12 is super great to take for our autoimmune diseases. The top supplements I've talked about a little bit here. Rosehip tea is full of vitamin C. Peppermint tea is very healing, uh, very healing for the GI tract, upset stomachs, Elderberry um, a syrup is really good for infections, sore throats. We talked about vitamin C. Curcumin is a spice. Uh, turmeric, it comes, curcumin comes from turmeric, but curcumin is an anti-inflammatory. So if you have a lot of pain, it's not curing diseases, it's bringing inflammation down. And as you bring inflammation down and get relief of some pain, then it's easier to exercise, to walk, and to do some of these other things people want you to do, but when you're in so much pain, how do you do that? <clears throat> so curcumin can be a big help for that, okay? And our next one is coming soon to a theater near you. Let's see. You may have to click your, oh, there it is, Healing Foods. This is on your handout. I have a whole page of Healing Foods, cucumber juice, lemon water every morning, lemon water on an empty stomach, Neutral, neutral, just lemon water, mildly warm if you want, but lemon is alive. Lemon needs to stay alive in water that's alive, okay? You don't need Kagan water machines, friends. You don't need that. You put lemon in your water and you alkalize your water. You put cucumbers in your water, you got alkaline water. You put uh, fruit juice of any kind, orange, anything, it alkalines the water, limes. So put a half a lemon in your water every day, same temperature, room temperature. It will clean the liver like nothing else. It's a powerful liver cleanser. When you put it in hot tea, it's great, but it's not, the lemon is no longer alive. It's gonna help, it can help sore throats, honey, all that, but the lemon in regular water every morning is a powerful medicine, okay? So use it that way. So I have a whole page on raw garlic, honey, all that stuff is listed in the handout over there. <clears throat> and those who are watching at home, if you're interested in the handouts, we can contact Pastor Liz, Elizabeth, and she will uh, get them to you. Now, I just wanna go through the last eight natural remedies. The first one was nutrition, and I just about soaked you up to go in through nutrition, but the next one is very important, exercise. <clears throat> exercise releases insulin from the pancreas, my friends. So if you're a type two diabetic or type one, and you go change your food, and you go exercise after this, and you're not checking your blood sugar, your medicine can put you in a coma, okay? So you need to talk to your doctor and be very careful when you change things. Do not say that this lady told us to do exercise. Remember, when you change something, 
you need to change the medication with it, okay? So exercise is very powerful and um, many benefits. Just 30 minutes a day, friends, 30 minutes a day can transform your life. If it's 10 minutes three times a day, get outside in that fresh air. Fresh air has particles that when touch, when oxygen, O2, touches the, the fresh air, it makes an electric current that kills viruses. Don't you see we need to be breathing fresh air wherever we are? We, if breathing a mask is putting carbon monoxide back into your lungs. So you got to take breaks and get outside and get that deep, fresh breath air, a fresh air, and breathe deep. When you do pulmonary rehab for people, we're not having to go, I'm just gonna walk around. No, they gotta get out there and open up their chest, take a deep breath, inhale, and exhale slowly. Just doing that on a track for, for pulmonary rehab, they can barely go around one time. When they start breathing deeper and exhaling, they're ready to go to sleep. They're so relaxed. And they can barely get around one time because they're not used to using their lungs. They've been breathing without using their diaphragm for years. They're breathing from their chest. <clears throat> I had a lady who had a stroke and it caused a lot of right side, left side weakness. She was unstable. She could hardly stand and function. She used to be very strong, short, little Japanese lady that lived with me in Hawaii and had several little ladies in my house that took care of. <clears throat> and so I took Jane and I got a trampoline. Everyone seen a mini trampoline? The little mini trampoline? Well, they have this bar that you can hold on to. If you have a trampoline, my friends, you don't need to lift one foot off that thing, okay? You don't need to lift one foot. Going like this is moving every single cell in your body. And 10 minutes is like walking 30 minutes. 10 minutes. Just going like this. Watch your favorite program, listen to a podcast, whatever. Hold on to the bar and go like this in every cell in your body. You're getting a lymphatic party going on in there, okay? So I took Jane. I said, okay, Lord, I don't know what to do for her, but she's all over the house. She couldn't even hold on to the walker. She's going to hurt herself, and then we're going to start over again. Put Jane in a chair, bungee cord her all over, locked her down to that, that, that to trampoline. She was in a chair, strapped her in, locked her down. I'm behind her on the chair, and she's in the chair, and I'm just pushing on the chair like this, and she's holding on the bar. We did that five minutes, maybe twice a day, finally built up to 10 minutes, finally built up to 30 minutes. She used to love it. She thought it was like riding a horse or something. Thanks, Lynn. Go, go. And I just did like that. Finally, after two months, Jane started walking better, and I said, okay, Jane, you're going to hold on to that trampoline yourself, and I'm going to be behind you, and we're going to go like this. That's all we did. Not one foot came up. After about three months of her doing that, Jane started walking straight. She started going in the kitchen. One arm was still weak, but she loved to cook. She was Japanese, and she loved to cook those, cut those vegetables real tiny. She could make them so thin and everything. She started cutting vegetables again. Friends, we can reset our brains with exercise. Don't put the doctor down when he says you can have cardiac rehab, you can have exercise therapy, go to it. Work with physical therapists, work with people who understand how to get the brain reset. Exercise. So N was for nutrition, E was for exercise. They show brains of students that just <clears throat> sat before their uh, test exam, the ones who had to take a big test and just sat quietly um, before taking the test, didn't move around, compared to those who went for a 20-minute walk before a very big test. Look at the difference of coloring in the, in the PET scans. You can see the circulation in the brain of the person who had. If you're going to take a test, if you're going to go through a stressful situation, get out for a little walk before you start. So the third letter in our doctor's new start N was for nutrition, E was exercise, W was water. My friends, <clears throat> people that are doing hot and cold showers every day, how many people know how to do a hot and cold shower? Okay, I've never had such cold water until I got here this week. This is the coldest water. I live in Arizona, okay? I grew up in Hawaii. Those faucets just don't put out cold water. But this hotel, the best thing, if you need to go to find a good cold shower, I'll give you the name. This cold comes out so good. And all you got to do, friends, 
As you get hot, you get warmed up, start bathing. These are your lymph nodes. They're underneath your arms, in your neck, at the groin. These got to get moving. They're laying there going, whoa, no one's doing anything all day long. I can just lay here and do nothing. The lymph nodes are the white blood cells that are supposed to fight infections and disease, and they're just sitting around doing nothing all day. So you do the hot shower, you get back in front, you got lymph nodes back here, hot, back in front, warm, okay? If you're older, take it slow. Remember if you're diabetic, got things like that, don't get as hot as you can because you may not feel it. Don't do as cold. But for those of you who can, three minutes or so, five minutes, get warmed up, then go to cold. Maybe 20 seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, back in front, a minute if you're muy fuerte, <clears throat> do hot, and then go cold, then go back to hot. If you can do three changes of that, my friends, Dr. Alexander Fleming, do you know his name? He's the one who invented penicillin. One of the biggest things he figured out was something called lysozymes. Lysozymes are in your nose and your throat and where your bacteria is coming in 24-7, viruses. He said, those who had done hot and cold showers regularly, his research showed they had the highest amount of lysozymes that are killing viruses and bacteria in your nasal passages, in your mouth, than anyone else. Hot and cold showers gave him the highest count of lysozymes. It wasn't a drug. It wasn't something else. It was water. Water on the outside, water on the inside. I wouldn't go, I'm not going to go into all the benefits of hot and cold showers. Hot foot baths are powerful. If you have a congestion in your head, sinuses, we want to move the circulation, the impaired circulation that's got, causing pain up here, sinus pain, throat pain. We want to move it. So we put your feet in warm water for about 20, 30 minutes, cool rag on your neck, and we, in 20, 30 minutes, <clears throat> in with cold water, all that congestion and pain up here is going to go right out through your feet. Every nerve in your body is in your feet. It is pulling that blood circulation, congested in your head, in your throat, in your sinuses, down to your feet. If you want to make it even better, use something called yellow mustard. Anyone ever heard of, not the yellow mustard on the hot dogs here in Chicago, this is powdered yellow mustard. You heard of powdered yellow mustard? Well, you can get it on Amazon. Powdered yellow mustard, about a half a cup. I use a cup, put it in that hot foot bath, keep it warm for 30 minutes, in with cold, rinse it off, get in your sweats, warm sweat shirt, sweatpants, get in bed, pray, rest for 30 minutes to one hour, and you will break that whole beginning of cold, flu, sore throats, headaches. You want to sweat that stuff out, okay? And then avoid the foods that may have been causing the headaches, sinus pain, and uh, congestion. So water on the inside, water on the outside. That's the third letter, letter. <clears throat> and we're almost done. Sunshine is very important. Sunshine, 15 minutes of light skin color, 30 minutes with darker skin color will produce the vitamin D that you need per day. You make vitamin D, it's a hormone, it's made through the sunlight hitting your skin, okay? Very important to get sunlight every day. We need light. Sunlight kills viruses. Sunlight kills bacteria. Sunlight can improve your thyroid function. Put your neck out there and get in the sun for about 10, 15 minutes. Let the sun reach your thyroid, okay? Thyroid disease is heavily caused by virus, uh, Epstein-Barr virus. So we have sunlight has many, many benefits especially boosting vitamin D, which boosts your immune system. Again, the next letter in New Start is T for temperance. Again, I said temperance is an old-fashioned word that says, slow down and don't eat those things that are harmful. Stop doing the things that are harmful, and in moderation, <clears throat> have the things that are good. Like I said, instead of that whole bag of Costco pecans, we have to, a serving is 14 pecans, okay? So we had to put them in little baggies, so we had to hide them like Easter and Easter eggs or something so he couldn't find them so I could control how much fat was going in there and uh, plugging them up. So moderation in that which is good. Again, the next letter in the acronym is A for air. We need fresh air. I just talked about that. 
get out there on weekends when you're working indoors and get as much fresh air as you can. The fresh air kills bacteria and viruses. It's super important. It brings down anxiety, decreases the survival of bacteria, strengthens the immune system, increases the rate and, and quality of growth in, plant, in plants and animals. Fresh air causes you to sleep better. We were given an inspiration to have a crack in every window in the room that you're in sleeping and let some fresh air get into your room so you're not breathing in stale, dead air all night. Fresh air in every place where you're sleeping, throughout the house, and it improves our learning. Who doesn't need that? Improves our lung function, and I know we all need that. The last couple of letters here is REST in the New START acronym. R is for rest, and folks, <laughs> there's about 10 million people who have to take a drug to go to bed at night. They cannot sleep. They cannot rest. I just say the word, I'm going to sleep, and I want to, I'm just out, cold, okay? So I can't help a lot of people who say they can't sleep because I've never really had that problem. Just like when people say, I can't gain weight, I say, I, I can't help you. I, I don't know what that's like. I, I have no idea. I can gain weight, so <laughs> there's no problem. I can't help people who say, I'm, I, can't, I eat and I can't gain weight. We need rest, my friends. We need not only rest in sleep, we need rest in our minds. We need rest and peace in our minds. And so rest and relaxation is very important. If you're just gonna have Bluetooth devices all over your whole body when you're trying to sleep, televisions, radios going, computers going, <clears throat> and then you try to go to sleep, give yourself like 30 minutes of maybe a little stretching, drinking a little, uh, Cherry juice has the highest amount of melatonin in any food. So a little bit of tart cherry juice before bed, maybe 30 minutes, is full of melatonin and it can help you sleep naturally. Melatonin is a powerful antioxidant. Talk to your own doctor about taking it, but it is a super antioxidant for the brain. It's an antioxidant, it's written in many COVID protocols about using melatonin daily. So talk to your doctor, but take it about 30 minutes before sleep. If it's good for you, it's, everyone's different, a little bit of melatonin. I can take three to five milligrams. My husband can take 120 milligrams and knocks out, passes out. But it's also a powerful antioxidant. So sleep is very important. The most powerful sleep that the body is healing the body is between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. in the morning. That is when the most powerful healing is taking place. Every hour before midnight is like getting two extra hours of sleep a night. So if you have a hard time sleeping, 10 and 2 are the main ones because at 2 a.m. we start making cortisol again. Cortisol is there to start waking you up and getting you going, okay? And the cortisol likes to stop working around 3 p.m. But what do we do? We drive through a coffee place and get something to pump up those adrenal glands to pour out cortisol, okay? Don't do that, okay? We need our good sleep, and that's how we do it. Get to bed by 10, and even if you wake up at 2 and you're just kind of laying there and reading or talking, thinking, praying, it's still you're getting rest. You're still, your body's resting. Don't be discouraged by that. <clears throat> Empty stomach, again, the only time the body heals, the only time the body heals is on an empty, when you go to sleep on an empty stomach. Again, that's when people usually throw eggs at me, but empty stomach means from seven o'clock. If we're going to bed at 10, seven o'clock, cut. Back to the police tape on the kitchen, wherever you're hiding all those goodies at night, cut it off, duct tape right here, and no food after seven. Go to bed on an empty stomach, you're gonna sleep like a baby. In the morning, you're gonna wanna Break your fast. You're going to want breakfast. You're going to have your celery juice, some wild blueberries on some oatmeal or something, and you're going to feel fantastic. But bring the fat down in the, in the evening especially. Bring the food to a stop by 7, empty stomach, and go to bed. Okay? Hitting our last <clears throat> amazing uh, natural remedy. And the clicker is tired of me clicking. So... There it is. Those are the foods that have the highest melatonin. Um, it's in the handout. 
Uh, cherries is number one, sunflower seeds is two, bananas have high melatonin, pineapples. Many people say, I, I eat a half a banana before I go to bed and I sleep like a baby. Uh, bananas have melatonin, tomatoes, walnuts, oranges, and almonds, okay? So, as we said, we need rest for our, our sleep. We also need rest, which is why God, with his own finger, now I didn't write it, so don't throw those eggs at me, but with his own finger, he told us what day to rest. He didn't say any day. He said, this is the day. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And he blessed it and sanctified it, and he wrote it with his own finger so we would never forget it. In fact, it's the only commandment that God said that has the word, remember the Sabbath. The rest you get on this Sabbath hour, Friday night at, at sundown to Saturday night at sundown, is anointed by God over any other day of the week, and you will get, have healing in your body. He says, if my people <clears throat> followed these health principles, there would be no sickness like this diseases of Egypt, Exodus 15, 26. Try it out. Try it, you'll like it. I didn't know about this supernatural remedy, the Sabbath. When I found it out, I'm just crazy about it. I'm addicted to worshiping and resting in God's arms on the Sabbath. Try it, my friends. Read about it in Exodus 20. If you haven't read the Ten Commandments, it's a good time to start. The last one, before Michael sings our song, is trust in divine power. The most natural, important remedy that God has given us today. To have a new start every day, we must put our trust in God before we understand every experience we may face. Before we ever hear, I'm sorry for what I did to you. Before anyone ever says, will you forgive me? They may never do it. But because of God, we can rest our situation, our case in his hands, and we can say, I forgive you. Even if you don't care to, to say you're sorry, I forgive you by principle because God has forgiven me of everything I've done when I confess my sins. Who am I not to forgive someone? We don't have to be with them. We don't have to live with them. We don't have to like them. But we can forgive them, okay? Studying his word, the Bible, speaking to him in prayer, worshiping God together with other believers will strengthen our immune system in ways that nothing else will ever do. So, Proverbs 3, 8 states that trusting in God will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. How many people need to have some love on their bones right now? A good massage, some pain relief. Guess what? Proverbs says, when you trust God, it'll bring health to your bones. Friends, we can ask God tonight for healing of any dis-ease in our bodies. We can ask God to take this situation that he may have allowed or we may have caused it ourselves, and let's ask him tonight that he will put his healing power through our life so we can go out and help others to know Jesus, the true healer. My friends, Jesus wants you well. He wants you well, but he will never force or coerce you to be well. It's a freedom of choice. And tonight he says, choose you this, this day who you're going to serve. Don't start or end your day without Christ. A study showed that just 12 minutes a day of meditating on a God of love showed measurable growth in the anterior cingulate cortex. It's the middle part of your brain. It's called the neurological heart where we experience having altruistic love, compassion, empathy, and spiritual heart for others. Don't we all need in this world to have more compassion, more love, more sympathy? 12 minutes a day, set your alarms. You got these iPhones with smartphone. Use your smartphone for something smart. Set it for 12 minutes a day to meditate on the love of God for you personally. That he just wants to love you, Liz. He just wants to love you all day, Liana. He wants to love you. Let him love you. We're so difficult to love sometimes. We put up so many walls. It says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. How much love have you shown yourself lately? Let's get back to that. Meditate on the love of God for 12 minutes. It improved the neurological heart where we have compassion and empathy for others. It was measurable growth on PET scan. Meditating on God's love reduces fear and healing to our being. 
Science confirms what the Bible through Solomon said. Above everything else, guard your heart. For from our heart flow the issues of life. Proverbs 4.23 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And Proverbs 23.7 says, Perfect love casts out all fear. 1 John 4.18 My friends, our, it says it here, we live and move and have our being in Christ. The way we're going to overcome this world is to live and move and have our being in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> and the slides are stuck. There we go. So, live and move and have your being in Christ Jesus. If our spiritual enemy, Satan, can incite mistrust of God in his sinless nature, his promises, and his word, causing a growing suspicion and doubt that God is really who he said he is, then Satan can completely undermine our faith journey and destabilize our life trajectory. Ultimately, if we don't trust God completely, we're unlikely to live unconditionally, sacrificially, passionately, or lovingly for God's name and God's kingdom. We're unlikely to allow God to define much about us at all. So we must let his word be fulfilled. Let Christ be in you. It's the mystery of godliness. Don't miss out on letting Christ give you a new start every day. And Michael's going to sing for us now as we close. Anyone who needs Jesus to touch them tonight and make them whole, let this song speak to you from God's heart to yours. Thank you. my soul. 
Thank you, Michael. I pray that God has touched you tonight from being here. There's probably something he was trying to say to each one of us, and I pray that he has touched you, and that uh, as we pray now, I'd like to include anyone you're thinking of tonight who needs a healing touch, any names that come to your mind, loved ones. We know Dr. Alicon and his uh, praying for his mother and his family. Dr. Alicon, if you're listening, we're praying for you, your mother, your family. All those who are going through difficult times right now, we know it's not easy, but we have this hope that burns in our heart. Jesus is coming back. And when he takes us to that place that he's prepared for us, there'll be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more health lectures. No one's going to have to hear this stuff anymore because we're going to be with the healer, the chief physician forever and ever. So as I pray right now, I just want to thank you for being with us tonight here at Hinsdale Church. Again, if there's, you're interested in handouts, they're right there. And if you need them sent to you, we can contact uh, Pastor Liz here for um, emailing them to you. So let us pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Let not anything that we're going through keep us from praising you. This is the Sabbath day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us be filled with your word and your praise. And we know that in your presence is fullness of joy. And you've told us what can make us sad when Jesus with his presence makes us glad. I ask you to touch every person listening, every person who hears this repeated, every person here tonight, every family member represented, everyone in the circle of our influence, anyone who right now needs your healing touch. And we ask you, Lord, please touch them with the love of God for them personally. Touch them where they need to be touched, Lord. Heal their brokenness, bind their wounds, heal their hearts, give them forgiveness to their enemies, and give us forgiveness for our sins against you. May we go home tonight and rest in your love for us. Learn more and more how much you love us and let you love us, for your love is unstoppable. We thank you so much for being with us here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Liz.